Hi everyone, welcome to Bible Study, March 14th, 2022. Um, so I have a teaser question for you. Let's get right into it. Who do you think had the most Holy Spirit power? Was it the believers in the Bible days or believers today? Now a few years ago I had the same question within me and I wondered, how come we not see no miracles like we used in the days of the Bible? Instant healing, teletransportation, supernatural provision. Do you remember the widow with the regenerating jars of oil in 2 Kings uh, 4? Now mark you, we have seen Deacon Nick's miracle, we have seen Sister Hunter's miraculous recovery. And do you remember my own testimony of God's amazing grace, healing and favor? But don't you want to see more? Especially when there's someone in front of you with a great and obvious need and you just wish that something more could be done for them than you are able to, such as instant healing. Someone may be in pain and your heart may wrench with theirs in sympathy. Additionally, God by his perfectness directed me to a TV program where the interviewer frequently features guests who commonly have present day supernatural experiences, such as instant provision. Now that made me realize that these miraculous events are not so scarce as I was thinking. And they are happening across our globe, they are happening in Christendom. And you know, when you go to uh, big events like big church conventions, then you see the effect that some of these churches are having on their communities and their populations. And this is what I want to see at our local church, because sometimes you don't see these in our local churches, but you see them in bigger churches. But I want to see it in our local church. So, you know, this is what we're going to be focusing on as we get into the word. And the word comes to us from 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13 to 15. And it reads, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Let us take a look at the first seven words. These form the title of my presentation and is also the answer to the teaser question. So who had the most Holy Spirit power? Was it the believers in the Bible days or the believers today? The answer, we having the same spirit of faith. Let that soak in for a second. So now that I've given you a chance to soak on that one for a few, now I'm going to read for you. Uh, from the Passion Translation, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 to 13. Ready? It is the same Holy Spirit who continues to distribute many different varieties of gifts. The Lord Yahweh is one, and He is the one who apportions to believers different varieties of ministries. The same God distributes different kinds of miracles that accomplish different results through each believer's gift and ministry as He energizes and activates them. Each believer is given continuous revelation by the Holy Spirit to benefit not just himself but all. For example, the Spirit gives to one the gift of the word of wisdom. To another, the same Spirit gives the gift of the word of revelation knowledge. And to another, the same Spirit gives the gift of faith. And to another, the same Spirit gives the gift of healing. And to another, the power to work miracles. And to another, the gift of prophecy. And to another, the gift to discern what the Spirit is speaking and to another the gift of speaking different kinds of tongues, and to another the gift of interpretation of tongues. Remember, it is the same Holy Spirit who distributes, activates, and operates these different gifts as He chooses for each believer. Just as the human body is one, though it has many parts that together form one body, so too is Christ. For by one Spirit we all were immersed and mingled into one single body. And no matter our status, whether we are Jews or non-Jews, oppressed or free, we are all privileged to drink deeply of the same Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 to 13, the Passion Translation. So church, we have the same spirit of faith that gives the gift of the word of wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and to another faith, and to another gifts of healing, the power to work miracles, the gift of prophecy, and the gift of discernment, and to another the gift of speaking different kinds of tongues, and to another the gift of interpretation of tongues. Let that sink in for a few seconds. You have to realize this. Church, we are supposed to be doing these things by the Spirit. Don't you just wish sometimes when your heart is heavy 
someone would just know by the spirit that you're hurting without you even opening your mouth or that you have a financial burden and provide an envelope blessing that would fix things don't you just wish it sometimes now there are about 400 plus members registered to central so the question begs to be asked where are the prophets or better yet who are the prophets who are the members that work miracles by the spirit who are the healers no one should enter the borders of this church sick and return home still sick unless they don't want to be better the CEO of St. Mary's should be pleading with us to ease up because they have no patience they are coming to central instead of not being healed we say we want to be like Jesus Jesus healed them all as it is written I challenge you don't sit on your gifts or worse not pursue your gifts by prayer supplication and surrender to the Holy Ghost take your Christianity higher Otherwise, you'll just be coming here Sunday after Sunday, dressing up nice, feel good, and then go to brunch afterwards or eat your Sunday dinner. You know, it would be like you converted the church to a social club where they meet and then go eat afterwards. Church, listen, the world out there is dying around you on your watch, on my watch. What are you doing about it? What am I doing about it? After the situation God took me through, I was walking with an assistive device, as you remember, and was able to move about with support as I became able by God's amazing, amazing grace. I wanted to go to Holy Land, having never been there before. All the different trips that were, you know, had happened before, I never went. So during one of the performances there, I started to have some back pain, man. Let me tell you something now. And it was getting so much worse. I pushed through, and when intermission came, my daughter, who had gone outside, came back and said that the Jesus character was praying in the lobby for anyone that had a need, so I should go. I went, not knowing what to expect. His prayer was already underway, so I just stood by. Then when he was done, I turned to walk away. And that's what we normally do. You, you know, somebody pray for you, you thank them, and you keep on moving. He called me back and asked me what was wrong, so I told him, and he began praying for me. He ended and again I turn to walk away because again that's what you do you know somebody pray for you you turn and you walk away he then asks a very unusual thing he asks how do I feel so I told him I felt a little better preparing to just you know turn around again and walk away disappearing to the crowd it was like not so fast so he started praying again and church the pain went it was gone just like that I think I exclaimed something like, wow, it's gone. I don't feel it anymore. And it was truly gone. I had experienced instantaneous healing, not from the Jesus character who did not know me, but from Jesus, the master healer who does. Now, remember, you know, in terms of physicalness, um, the human body is designed to heal itself. God made it like that. So, you know, you have a malady, you got a cut, or you have some um, little infirmity, you get better. And that's what the human body is designed to do. But when your physical nature, your physical body meets divinity of Jesus, something is different. The healing is rapid and instant, and you can never be the same after that. So that is what we're, we, we're talking about, the instantaneous healing when Jesus is into the picture, when God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit manifests into your infirmity, and instantly it is healed. Church, repeat after me. Lord, I surrender. Please manifest my gifts of the Spirit. When you say it, how did it make you feel? Did you feel resistance? Did you feel skepticism? Like it's foolishness you just said? Did you feel relief? Excitement? Anticipation? One reason why some of us aren't manifesting, we're not surrendering to the Holy Spirit. We want to bullbuck and conquer our way through life and our Christian life also. We literally have to relearn or unlearn how we've been approaching our lives in general and, you know, separate our Christian lives from this in the sense that if you've been, you know, and, and, and this is the thing, we know we, where we're from and we know life is rough and tough and challenging a lot of times, 
and you have to push through life and you have to almost buck your way through life. And then now we become Christians and we, we try to do the very same thing because what you know. You know, you may have a very struggling existence and you may you may have your kids and it's just, you know, for example, our mother, she may have her kids and it's just she alone and the bill's not meeting and she has to find all manner of creative ways to make the bills meet at the end of the month. And so she has to do it and she has to do it. You know, in my case, my grandmother was very strong and independent. My mother, strong and independent. They had to push life. And so this thing about surrendering, I didn't know it. All I saw was the strength and push and push. And I didn't know what surrendering was. It was one of the hardest things for me to do. I still have a challenge with it. And I can't imagine it's me alone. So some of us want to be calling the shots ourselves and, you know, and make time eventually for God if we get a minute. Maybe when Sunday rolls around, maybe next week. That's not good enough. We have to literally surrender to step back, to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and not the other way around. We must put ourselves on his schedule, not he on ours. The Lord also reminds me of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So we must believe that he is, and he is able, and he wants to do the good things that he says that he is going to do. Alrighty, let's move on. So we get our cross-reference scripture from 1 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Let's take a look at it, and I'm going to read now from the King James Version. To another faith by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit you ever meet somebody who they know like they know like they know like the sun coming up tomorrow morning they just know that something is going to work out you know that God is going to do something and you in your situation be like if I could just have the same faith like this person I mean how come we can't have the same faith like them be encouraged to every man is given a measure and when I say man, I mean humanity. To everyone is given a measure of faith, right? We must all exercise it. But some persons, as according to the word here, faith by the same spirit, which means that some have really, really more than a typical person, you know? So even if you have, if all that you have is a mustard seed, and if you, have, if you don't know what a mustard seed looks like, you can Google it. If you really want to see what a mustard seed looks like, find your health food store, maybe um, your, your, um, your Whole Foods are one of them, and you know, check out some of those mustard seeds, see what they look like. Really, really small. But it gives you an idea of what Jesus was talking about when he said, if this is all that you have, use it. And so let me remind you now, our passage of focus, the first of the three verses, 2 Corinthians 4.13, and the first of the three verses, like we said before, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. We're going to pause for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we're going to invite you to come on Monday evening for the next episode, the live episode of Bible Study. Bible Study is fun. Let's share. See you soon.